Hi, so uh, riffing on the statement, um, the man of superior virtue, the man of superior virtue is not virtuous, and that is why he has virtue. So that was something written by Lao Tzu in Tao Te Ching, and then um, It sort of reminds me how imperfect but real this journey to life is. And not just my own journey, but uh, everyone. And for a while I held this mis I held this illusion that um, because I heard the destiny message and I heard the utility of self-forgiveness and that it's something that I regularly use. In spite of all that, it doesn't make me more than or less than other people who have never heard of this term process. And and linking back to the statement that I said in the beginning of this vlog, how the person of superior virtue is not virtuous, and that is why he has virtue. It it's implying a sort of self honesty, because. We live, I mean, us human beings, we live for a limited time and of course, each one of us individually to ourselves think that all our thoughts and insights and realizations are original and they are branded with, in my case, the Casper brand and and it's the next best thing since sliced bread. But uh, I mean, that it's a very um, humbling detail about process where anything and everything that I realize about my own mind and my thoughts and my patterns and my behaviors, that shit was and is, has always been latent as a potential within and as those behaviors to themselves or those patterns to themselves. And I'll say it, all of my living patterns, the stuff and how I participate day to day daily to weekly, none of it is new. It, it's all rehashed, unoriginal repetitions of the sins of the fathers. Is, is They are patterns based on my ancestors and I, someone once said to me, what have you done wrong that nobody throughout all time has ever done? And at the time I didn't really think about it, but it seems relevant now, now that I'm sharing. And what else about not being virtuous? Well. Not being virtuous is like the releasing and letting go of fear, like, like a God fearing fear towards virtue or towards what I already define as not virtuous. 
it, it's sort of like the right and wrong, good and bad polarity, where you already know what it is you want based on your own definitions and your personalities. And it's kind of funny how what I, for using myself as an example, what I believe to be good is actually a reflection of the fears that I hold inside me about aspects of myself. So it's sort of like when you walk past someone, uh, a girl wearing a black cardigan, it sort of reflects how she m might possibly uh, believe her upper arms to be too thick or fat. So, so hence the black cardigan. And it's sort of the same thing with being good, being right, being righteous, and um, yeah. And well, what's it that I said? Um, not being virtuous. Okay. Yeah, not being virtuous, there's an element of courage to that. And there's an element of the beginner's mindset to that, where you hold no expectations going into, let's say, the position that most people despise being in. And to enter that position or be in that situation um, it, it also sort of it sort of uh, it links to how um, I lost myself there it's okay um, Not being virtuous. Let's see. Beginner's mindset. Okay. Um, I mean, there's something very vitally important about being capable of living through the all the negative the bad the wrong the the disgusting the the vile the 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 things that we avoid generally it hold all all of all of that um disgusting stuff and that bad and wrong and evil stuff holds a key to understanding our own nature and it doesn't help that we hold this knowledge of the good which re which only reflects our our weaknesses and our fears It's, it's kind of like a situation where um, it's like, speaking for myself, it's like I rushed the process of naming what is good and, and abdicating my firsthand experience and believing that I can learn what is good from my ancestors and what has come before me. So, so this is, th this touches on a point that I hold dearly to myself, 
which is the observation that first-hand experience is being put down to the lowest and defiled and you know, poked with a stick at arm's length be because there's this illusion that if we only had the so-called sacred knowledge and information, I, I suppose in this day and age, it's the sacred knowledge and information is probably uh, something tech related, technology related. And we believe that is what is going to save us. And that is what is going to secure our survival. And that is what is going to uh, grease our, our habits and patterns into something great and something good. Because, you know, having a, having a very good salary tends to make one believe that one is good. It, it's just, it's something about fuzzy logic, that one. And yes, yeah, the question just came up within me. Why don't any of us deliberately Try acting not virtuous. Try but then I sort of respond to myself in the sense that <laughs> um, just just simply reacting to immediately reacting to what is physically manifest here as the actual practical reality that is up to me is where I'm responsible for this thing. Um, yeah, I lost myself. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it to here for today. Yeah, thanks. Bye.